Hey everybody, Ray here. Today I'm gonna to show you how I made this toy box, but I'm gonna do something a little bit different. I'm gonna show you every mistake that I made, or boo-boo, and I'm gonna keep a boo-boo count. You know, every time I make a project like this, I kind of start out with a rough plan. And in that rough plan, I know what I want it to be, you know, 44 inches wide, uh, 20 inches deep, 20 inches. It's a rough plan. And I, I just sort of wing it from there. And sometimes that causes me a little bit of a problem. But I'm going to show you all those problems I caused myself. And I hope you have fun watching the video. And don't forget, if you like this video, hit me with that thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. So here's my rough plan. The frame for the outside of the toy box will be made up of one by fours, and that'll be for the upper, the lower, and the struts in between for support. The sides will be made by one by fours across the top, and the one by threes on the side. And then the walls inside will all be half inch plywood, except for the bottom, which is gonna be a quarter inch plywood. And then the top will also be half inch plywood. Now you notice a lot of my dimensions here are 20 inch. That's because the plywood that I have is a half inch by 46 inches by 20 inches. So I'm gonna to try to minimize my cutting by making it 20 inches tall and also 20 inches wide. We'll see if that all works out for us. But I do this just to get a general idea how many one by fours that I need, how many one by threes that I need, and how much plywood I need. So the first thing I did was to cut the top and bottom pieces that will make the front of the frame. And next what I need to do is to cut my uprights here that I'll fill in with my one by fours on the front and the back. Now, in theory, my plywood is 20 inches wide and each of the one by fours are three and a half inches. So three and a half and three and a half, you've got seven inches. If you subtract that from the 20 on the plywood, you know that you need a 13 inch piece to fill in this gap. We have our uprights cut here for the frame and you can already get a sense of what the front of this is going to look like because this will be the outside frame and then the plywood will be in behind it. So the next thing we have to do is to take our front and back frame and put some pocket holes in here to hold this together. We have all of our pocket holes drilled into our upright struts here. Now we want to line them up and um, screw them together. In the center, you want to make sure that this board is perfectly centered with your long board here. It's very easy to do that. This is a 44 inch board, so 22 inches is the center and just put a little pencil mark there in the center. This board here is a one by four. It is three and a half inches wide. So one and three quarter inches from the edge gives you your center of this board. So you mark that and then all you have to do is line up those two center markings from the outer board and the upright board here and this will be perfectly centered in your project. For some reason, and I've never had this happen before, when I put my pocket hole screws in, it split this board here. Now you can see the split right there and also a little bit down there. And the only thing I can figure is that those grains are running pretty close on the corner here, enough such that when the screw penetrated that, it just jacked it loose and split it. Never seen it before, but okay, problem number one we have to fix. Make ourselves a new 44 inch one by four here. Well, I had to cut one more 44 inch board, but as you can see, went together perfectly this time. I wish I could tell you why that happened and why it split that board, but like I said, I've never had that happen before. Okay, on to make the one for the back. The sides of the toy box were really put together very much like the front and the back. So I've got my one by threes, which are 20 inches on each side, and then a one by four here that is 15 inches long. So this makes up the side. Now, the other thing that I had to do was this 
will connect to the front and the back like that. So in this case, I had to put a couple of extra pocket holes in here to connect the sides to the front. I'll give you an inside look as to how this looks. Well, here is the front and back, and here's the side, which, which fits inside the front and the back. And then the three pocket holes that I put in here are what'll screw the sides to the front and the back. It's coming together really well so far. Now we're going to go ahead and sand down the face before I put it together. And this is going to be painted so it doesn't have to be really, really fine. But wherever the edge is, like this edge doesn't meet together as smoothly as I'd like. I just want to get those all smoothed out so it looks really nice after I paint it. Okay, I told you I was going to show you my boo-boos. So right here, when I started to put this together, this edge was not flush with this edge. It was just out too much to have to sand it down. So I had two choices. I could have cut another one of these one by fours and put two more holes in each side and put it on. Or, because I don't like to waste, I just moved my pocket holes over slightly and re-drilled them so I could put new screws in here and get this nice and flushed up. And the reason I just reuse this is because this is on the inside, it will be covered by plywood and you won't see it anyway. So no one will know that I made this boo-boo. Okay, here's the first thing to get me with my rough planning. Normally when you buy a half sheet of plywood, it is 24 by 48. These sheets of plywood that I bought are 20 by 46. So when I designed my frame, I must have been thinking 24 because it's too wide. But here's an easy workaround. All I have to do, I've got a scrap piece of this same plywood and I'll just mount this to the back end of the toy box. I'll put a piano hinge along here, which will be a great way to open this toy box top. No one will ever know that I really didn't design it to be that way. Pretty smart workaround. Now the next thing we want to do are to put in the supports that will support the plywood when I drop it into the bottom of the toy box. So the view you have here is looking through the top of the toy box into the bottom. I've put five supports across the bottom here. I've got a one by four on each side, and then I have a one by two in these three middle supports here. That should be more than enough support. And you can see that these are held by multiple pocket screws. These are only held by one pocket screw on each end. Now what I needed to take into consideration was that I want these wheels to be able to go underneath the bottom panel here. So here's the bottom. I wanted to recess the bottom such that I could put these wheels on here and I don't want them to force the bottom of the toy box to be too high off the floor. And you might be able to see my original marks here where I originally put these boards and then I had to move them. I got kind of in a hurry because my wife had dinner ready and I needed to get in there. So I'm not counting this as a boo-boo. This is her fault. So I put them in the wrong place too low and then when I put the wheels there, they just stuck out too far. So I came back and I recessed those up just using some pieces of block that I put in there to achieve the right height. And now they're going to be perfect. Now to put our sides in, we know that the width across here has to be 20 inches. And then all we have to do is measure from the top of the base of the toy box to the top of the frame. And then we know how tall it has to be. So after we've done that, then our pieces will slide in there and they'll fit pretty perfectly. And we want them to be flush with the top of the frame and that worked out exactly right. So we've got both of our sides done here and then to do the back you essentially had to do the same thing. Just measure between your sides and then now you know what the, how tall it needs to be and then you cut down that piece of plywood and that should fit in there pretty snugly. 
and it does. So we've got a pretty perfect fit, flush all the way around the top with our frame, and the plywood's going to look really good in here. Now it's getting a little heavy now that I've put the plywood in there to be lifting it up and down off of that workbench. So I'm going to go ahead and put the wheels on here now so I can move it around. The only thing critical about putting these wheels on is as they rotate, you just need to make sure that it won't hit either one of the sides of the box here. So once you've determined where that is, you can just mark a few lines on there, measure those lines, and then duplicate that for each corner. Now what I'll do is just mark each hole, and I'll, build a, I'll drill a pilot hole, and I'll go ahead and put the screws in on all four of these wheels. We're putting these wheels on using these number 10 by half inch screws that I've just picked up at Home Depot and they're doing the job just fine. So once you get all your wheels on, you're ready to flip it over and give it a roll. Perfect. Now you'll probably recall that one of the boo-boos that I counted due to my rough planning was that my top wasn't quite wide enough for my frame. And so I just wanted to add a piece in the back here to fill that out and to put my piano hinge on there. So what I've done is I've just taken a piece of one by three that I've put in here with pocket screws. And what that will do, it's going to add more support to both this back piece and the top itself, because they will meet on that one by three. So at the end of the day, my work around here actually is kind of better than my original plan. So I ask you, does that mean I can take back one of my boo-boos? Nah, I guess not. So in this next step, what we're going to do is attach the front part of the lid to the back part here. And we're going to do that with the piano hinge. I cut that down to just a little shorter than the total width of my top here. And then I lined it up with the crack between those two boards so that crack is right at the center of my hinge. And then I taped it down on both ends with some masking tape here, nice and tight, because I don't want it moving around when I'm putting the screws in. The other thing I did was I put a couple of big clamps on there to keep those two boards as tight together as I could. Now, you don't have to do that. I just did it. It's an extra step, and it would work just fine without it. And then what we're going to do is build, drill some pilot holes using a self-centering jig. And what this does is the external portion here will fit right into the hole where the screw needs to go in the hinge. And then when you drill down, the drill will come out and it will be right in the center of that hole. It's really hard to get those holes and drilled in perfectly in the center. And this really does the job for you. So all you do is line that up and then just drill down and it'll put that hole right square in the center where you want it. So I'm going to go through and go ahead and drill all the holes that I need for my screws for the piano hinge. So now that we've gotten our hinge on here, this toy box is, for all practical purposes, finished. Now I've just held the top on here with a couple of clamps right now, and I've only put about six screws in my piano hinge, and that's because they want to have it painted, but they haven't decided what colors they want it painted yet. When we do paint it, all of the exterior will be painted one color and probably the trim will be painted a separate color. So all of the plywood that you see will be one color. On the inside, of course, the lid will be whatever color matches the plywood on the front, but then the inside itself will be treated with polyurethane. And then the top edges here will be whatever color they decide they want the trim to be. But this came together really well for us. I'm really pleased with it. You know, we had a couple of boo-boos, but that's going to happen with any woodworking project. And I hope showing you those boo-boos will help you understand that, you know, sometimes you just move forward with things and you make mistakes and you cover them up and you just keep on going and everything works out fine. The only other thing that I will add to this, 
are some soft closing hinges because I don't want any little fingers to get stuck when my nephews and nieces start playing with this toy box. Well, I hope this video was helpful. If it was, hit that thumbs up for me, would you please? And hey, if you'd like more content like this, you might want to subscribe as well. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.